Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, cruising on the traffic. Uh, it's a little medium traffic today, trying to head into the city. I was going to ask you folks again about your concept of where we're headed. A lot of times, and when I say it, you can use that as where we're headed, where is your family headed? Where is your, your, your generational destiny headed? When I, when I listen to people talk about generational wealth, generational legacy, when I, when I look to, okay, generational wealth, generational legacy, that's great. It's great as a talking point. But where does it apply when you're a parent and you have children? What are you instilling into them other than uh, 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 ethnicity and nationalism of, in the form of I'm black, and, you know, the blackness, blackness, blackness. What are you teaching them that is going to make them be economically viable in the country they reside in? You know, I don't care if you're in the Philippines. I don't care if you're whatever country. You could be a passport bro. Again, what are you building that is going to be left behind? And again, I, I look at that all the time because realistically, the people in power have always been in power. The people in power at the very top, they have been in power for generations. They, they've had legacies, Carnegie's, Rockefeller's, DuPont's, um, just to name a, a few. Th these are generational pass downs. You could even argue Trump's. It's not a Trump based video. It's just talking about the fact that, you know, somebody gives you a million dollar handoff, you know, obviously you went somewhere. You give, like in Bezos' family, you know, they gave him a couple hundred thousand to start. I, I, I couldn't, I mean, gave him, not, not gave him and he had to get it back, gave him, like, hey, here's $250,000 back when he started Amazon, which is, way more money if you translate that into today's time who has a half a mil sitting around to give their kid just to say hey if you got an idea that could fail would fail likely to fail high probability and you're going to be a 10 percent chance of not failing that we're going to give you two hundred and fifty thousand now today's money five six hundred thousand dollars which is the cost of a home Nowadays, an average home, we can give you a free home just to lose this money potentially. I mean, that that's that's a hell of a handoff, man. It's a hell of a springboard to jump off to do any business. You'd be a fool to lose that money and not make yourself successful. But here we are. And again, these these movers and shakers and poppers the people competing with you to become economically viable it doesn't matter what you feel if you're not playing this the, the real game in this in this world we live in you're not bowling because you got a Bentley or a, a Bentley coupe you're bowling if you have something where your children are not going to lose your wealth that's when you're really bowling I mean, you look at some of these families that come over from other, other countries and their children become doctors, lawyers. They're able to gain a foothold into this country when they came from countries that had nothing. And we're born here and we don't have any generational wealth left behind. And it's not even that we're leaving them stuff. We're not teaching them anything. I don't, I don't give a damn if you leave your kids $10 million because in rich affluent families, they lose it too. So the real, the real trick is, are you teaching your kids about generational wealth? Are you building skills that are going to lead to generational outcomes? Are you investing and in giving them generational knowledge so they can be, be further ahead in the economies that are going to be tougher? Again, when my parents were growing up as kids, you could afford a house on one income and you didn't need to make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month in order to be upper middle class. You, didn't, you, you could make a thousand, two thousand dollars in the eighties and still have a mortgage, bills, your wife could shop, you could you and you had money left over. You could vacation. You had lifestyle. You could own a home. You 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 weren't saddled with debt. 
And my, my point to saying all of that is that when, when, when now when I'm growing up, we've had wars, we've had inflation, we've had the Great Recession, we've, we're, I mean, now we're about to go into another recession. I mean, they're throwing, we're getting recessions almost like we're getting uh, comets flying past the, the, uh, the Earth. Dude, you can't just you see this white car over here. You just gonna get over whenever the hell you feel like it. Your ass gotta wait. You can't just get over because you need to make a left turn. What is up with people driving like this, man? You you put your left signal light on, and that means automatically everybody's supposed to stop and wait for you like your damn Moses parting the Red Sea. I can't stand with this new driving shit they got, man. And what about this other thing? You know what other thing that pissed me off with people driving? What is, What is this new thing where when you're making a right turn, the car, like, if your car is a small car like that car, what is this thing where you go left and you come out wide like you got a damn tractor trailer? Like, like you have a, like, in this big this big rig right here that has whatever fuel in it, I understand why it needs to make a wide turn. But a damn Toyota Corolla or one of these small Yaris's, you don't need to go left. You're almost veering into my lane in order to make a wide turn. It's not a sharp right. You gotta cut your wheel better, man. I don't know what this is with this new driving thing. People go left and they come out wide. The, your car ain't that big, player. Any which way, enough about that rant. But again, if you're not teaching your children to grow up and understand that what we're experiencing today in our economy, right now in this present time, it's going to be more competitive, worse for the next generation. You know, when I when I started Ancestry Lands, under the bottom says one generation to the next. I have to teach my wife and get her mindset on that this we're building is not for you. This we're building is to get the children ahead. And if they think the same way and they think generationally, we're gonna always be living our lives for the next generation. Now you might say, well, what's the point in that? Well, what are you having children for? The simple thing, if you don't want to build generationally, then don't procreate. Every animal, every animal that has children or offspring from lions to baboons, the males fight for dominancy and they maintain that so that way they can keep their legacy. And they do it for as long as they can, even to the point where so their 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 sons can go out and be they can be strong enough to go out to conquer other prides, because the ones that are doing great, they have the better land, they have the better hunting grounds, they can go out now have stronger children, stronger lions that grow up to take over and they become super prides. And a lot of times it comes from a strong lion that was in a better part. I've never seen a weak lion take over. I mean, hell, even Disney got to understanding that. Mustafa, the Lion King. Scar, he all skinny, rugged looking, all, you know, all, all zesty, all, all devious. He won all the smoke. And when he took over, look how it looked. I've never seen lions like Scar not not the lion scar but i'm talking about lions in the disney movie like scar when you translate that into the real world those lions are out of here so if you can if you could translate this to a law of nature then it is still a an actual thing that exists with us as human beings the only difference is they got all this traffic over here. We're heading into the Philadelphia area, folks. If you have not seen Philly in the skyline or in the background, or no, I'm sorry, well, in this background ahead of me, because there are two backgrounds, this background where I'm at and the background in front of you in this dual recording view, you'll see we're going into Philly. We're actually about to hit, for all those who don't know, we're about to hit the Philadelphia Zoo, which is right just off this exit, Gerard Avenue. In Philadelphia, very nice zoo. I've done a video where my family and I, we've gone out to the zoo. You can go back and watch it. Um, it was probably, what, in April we went because that was for my son's birthday. He wanted to go to the zoo. Uh, a great time, great video. I would suggest you go back and watch that if you want to learn about um, why, you know, about the Philadelphia Zoo. I learned something about Philadelphia Zoo that I did not know, that Philadelphia Zoo was one of the first public zoos in this country. Yeah. 
Yeah. So any which way, you if you're not if you're not teaching them, it's a law of nature with the the lion prides. You 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 you, you can provide great resources for your children and your family but in order to make that something generational you got to teach it you have to explain you got to instill knowledge you're going to have to help a another and that's the problem we don't help the next generation other than say okay i got you to college high school okay good you're done see ya that that's 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 alligator talk that's reptilian way of dealing with things and guess what it doesn't work when the world is against you we we make our children become our adversaries our competition and again what the world is trying to do is take your bloodline up out of here but, th but those are the people who are living for them and themselves in their lives and I will guarantee you one thing for the, the Susie Ormans out there you're going to get old one day and your money won't matter What's going to matter is who's there around you to be there with you at the end of your life. And the reason why I can speak to it is because I see it. I've seen what it's like when people put you in conservatorship and they leave you alone and they take your money because you didn't value them and they don't value you. So when you're at your most vulnerable like it was when you were a baby, when I was a baby, now and now it's shine time. Now it's time to look at all the resources you got because, again, what you don't understand is the state will look for next of kin. It don't matter if you don't talk to me. If I'm the only one left, they're going to say, you can handle it or the state will handle it. And I guarantee you, you don't want the state dealing with you. We've seen that when that, when, when the pandemic happened, how the state treats its, its citizens that they're in charge of. You're going to be out of here and all that's going to happen is that the government is going to use the same people you complain about will be the same people that inherit your money. This is why the elite understand the whole point of passing down the wealth, passing down the income, generating generational wealth and not having it being lost within the, in families. Because again, the state is going to take it and the only thing they're going to do with it is you might as well not even been, been living, player. You might as well not even live. Because they, they, again, divide a family, divide a man from his woman, divide a parent from their child, and again, you break the tribe. You see that happen in Africa. Once they made the tribes go against each other, it was no longer Africans versus Europeans. It was tribalism, and it caused people to be divided up in their own homes. And guess what? Now they can be easily led astray. But that's not how we're thinking. So again, folks, you can see Philadelphia right here. City of brotherly love in the background. We're going to end it there, folks. I am your host, Philip Davis, Ancestrylands, Ancestrylands.com. Remember, a, the link to my book, Getting Dolls from Dirt, is in the description section below. So is the link to my website where you can find property. Remember, folks, you either own property or you'll be owned as property, folks. Phil Davis, look at this city. Beautiful. Ancestrylands, Ancestrylands.com. Take care, folks. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment if you're not subscribed to the channel. Make sure you click the notification, the bell, so that way you can get notifications when I go live or go on video every single day, folks. Mindset content is what you need. Remember, teach, not preach. Phil Davis, Ancestrylands, Ancestrylands.com. I'm out.